so uh, before uh, we begin like uh, t- while people are joining in who got right. a chance to watch today's parade <laughs> Yeah how many of you actually watch today's parades it will be lovely to get some feedback from uh, people around here and uh, you know my memory doesn't go back very far uh, but mm-hmm. certainly uh, more than uh, the younger people around my memory earliest memory would be somewhere in the mid 80s uh, watching it mm. on tv mm. so um, I, in fact, am wondering uh, what it was like before the TV days, which is why yeah. I started reading about it, and uh, that's how the idea of uh, this interaction yeah. came about. So, yeah, um, and from reading about it to doing a podcast on that, so that's very interesting. <laughs> well, um, talking about it really and how it uh, impacts the rest of uh, the country. Yeah, in fact, that's why I love podcasts. So. one is you get to know about things which you don't know and if you know something you can you get to share it with the world so whatever you yeah, get to... i was i was uh, you know uh, looking at some of the budgets at some point uh, i hope you'd ask me about the budget i have a couple of figures i mean mm-hmm. my jaw dropped so uh, in 2001 which was 51st um, republic day uh, celebrations mm-hmm. the budget for it was something like 145 crores wow and hang on uh, the last figure i have is for 2014 mm-hmm. uh, which was 320 crore 320 crore wow uh, that was 7 years ago staggering 8 years ago as a matter of fact my hunch is it must be close to 400 crore by uh, <laughs> today's figures uh, yeah. i wish somebody gets us a figure and so on so that's that's for an event which is held for few hours in the morning wow. that's right and <laughs> it's also very central to the idea yes. of india as yes. a nation as uh, a kind of uh, continuously evolving right. uh, people and place hmm. for the last uh, 74 odd years right we will definitely come to that and go a little deeper but uh, before we begin so i'll just introduce myself i'm rohan thakar i'm the co-founder and creative producer of ep lock media where our lovely podcast called history chatter is hosted and produced and it's available around the world and uh, with history chatter we have been trying to share stories events about people places uh, which may have not been known by many uh, who are there so and of course we have the host and the creator of history chatter mr not mr rather he is a professor he is dr anirban dopan <laughs> no, that makes me sound very old but but well, realities of life i do have a phd <laughs> can't disown it it's a younger yeah. people space very happy to be here rohan and thanks for the opportunity yeah it's it's so great to you know do this uh, session we were just thinking about it what can we do for republic day since we have been working on a secret project for quite some time and i'm sure when the project comes out i'm sure uh, the listeners the audience the supporters who have been supporting our podcast for so long will be excited to know about it but uh, we're just here to celebrate the 73rd republic day uh, 73 years since our founding fathers laid the groundwork for a uh, a secular country where we can have uh, we can live freely and also have a uh, peace of mind which may not, may have not been there in the british raj and of course uh, rules are a very important pieces of uh, running a country but we won't go into that we will go into something which is very fascinating thing which happens every year that is the republic day parade uh i'm sure whenever you watch it on tv you uh, you might feel the uh, pride swelling in your chest uh, with the action that is happening uh, down the parade and uh, that got me thinking how did this all begin and why do we do this because yeah we are uh, we are celebrating the uh, constitution the birth of constitution but why exactly does the parade take place so professor told me that why not do we do a podcast and yeah let's let's learn something about it and also share what we are learning so welcome professor anirban 
to the live session thank you thank you so much rohan this is our first uh, history chat live as a matter of fact and i'm yeah. looking forward to it yeah so it got me to thinking uh, why is exactly republic day celebrated but well, good enough question yeah. you know it's not as simple as it sounds as we see it today um you refer to our chests filling up with pride uh, at the glory of our nation that was indeed the objective of uh, the first prime minister jawaharlal nehru who more or less personally designed this whole uh, affair but um, you know it also bears traces of older histories mm-hmm. in the sense that um, at least two older histories um, in the parade can be easily detected one is the memory of uh, fortunately or unfortunately the british empire itself i'll mm-hmm. begin with that you see there were um, a number of darbars or holding courts ceremonially holding courts by the british monarchs in india you know one happened in 1877 when uh, queen victoria was formally um, sort of uh, welcomed as the empress of india uh, then there was another in 1903 when edward the 7th was uh, consecrated as kaiser e hind or the emperor of india and another of those darbars or uh, grand holding courts happened in 1911 when uh, king george the 5th was once again welcomed as uh, the the king and power of india the practice or the custom of the soldiers marching past and the head of the state taking salute Mm-hmm. uh goes back to some of these darbars this was also when the practice of um calling upon the various princes native princes from various parts of india who were not formally uh, strictly part of british india but part of indian subcontinent at the same time uh was started so you would have these princes marching past with their own uh soldiers and army um and there would be a pageant where people would be given honors and medals and so on and so forth and all of this would be held in um the center of the city in the heart of of capital uh, in delhi certainly earlier too even though uh, it was not capital at the time in in 1903 and so on so the tradition of the darbar where a large monarch or emperor held court at the center of the capital city goes back to the british empire the other tradition which um um indeed more directly uh, goes into the making of the republic day parade is um associated with the date itself <laughs> in 1929 lahore congress uh, the indian national congress in that 1929 right. session in lahore decided to celebrate uh, january the 26th as the day of complete independence in their mind they mm. had decided to celebrate the day as as uh, the first celebration of full independence and uh, moving away in their mind yeah. from the bondage yeah. of the british empire now mm. that um, would typically be celebrated in various parts of india through a march in the morning prabhat feri the leaders would um, sing patriotic songs along with their followers march through uh, the major thoroughfares of various cities then they'd gather at uh, one of the central points and hoist uh, the national flag uh, that was designed by gandhi at the time and they would of course also um, observe this ritual for the next uh, 20 or so years 47 or until 47 or so but by 47 you know um there were now technically two days for uh, independence celebrations mm. so january 24 26 strictly speaking could no longer be celebrated as independence day because you have a real independence day right. coming mm. up so that uh, however was also a very strong memory and it had mm. a great deal of political significance the leaders of independent india were also major leaders of the indian national congress such as nehru and gandhi and patel and so forth gandhi was of course um, assassinated by 1948 and patel and nehru took over the responsibility of designing the contours of independent india 
Hmm. At the same time, the constitution of India was being written um, and it right. went on, the process went on for three, nearly four long years. And it was hmm. formally ready by November uh, 49. And then there were a number of ceremonial processes, um, calligraphies, redesign of the constitution, the entire process they estimated would be over by early uh, 1950 or so. In fact, the signing of the constitution into effect uh, in the calligraphy form got over by 24th of January, 1950. So keeping this older history of celebration mm. of independence by the Congress, uh, the leaders decided that it would now be celebrated as Republic Day. And that would be the day in which the constitution was to come into effect, which it did. Hmm. Now, I remember the you telling also me, is a, I remember you telling me India yes, did not get 100% independence uh, in 1947. Precisely. And this is something we mentioned in the very first episode of History Chatter. I mean, how time flies. Okay. See, technically, it's a very simple point. A country is not a sovereign country unless and until it has its constitution in operation. So even though the British had left Indians in charge and left completely by uh, August 15, 1947, uh, the constitution was yet to come into effect. India was not yet a republic. It did not elect its leaders as yet mm. In, mm. under the new constitution. As a matter of fact, you know, Court cases um, still went to uh, the Privy Council, which was the highest uh, court of mm. law in the United Kingdom between 47 and uh, 50. India did not have a Supreme Court until then. So technically, India was independent, but still part of the United Kingdom in a strictly legal sense. Mm. So yes, um, very technically speaking, India did become completely independent uh, on, uh, on January the 26, 1950. Mm. So the parade actually follows as uh, a kind of natural uh, corollary of the day. The president and the cabinet was sworn in in the morning. There was mm -hmm. no time in the morning to hold the parade on that year. The president was sworn in in the in the president palace, uh, which is now called the Rashtrapati Bhavan. And then um, there was a ceremonial march through the streets of Delhi. And he went to this place called Arvind Stadium, uh, a little further up north, um, which is now called Major Dhyan Chand National Stadium, and took guard from the three armed forces. The planes hmm. flew past uh, and it was quite a, a grand occasion. But do remember, it was also technically a ceremony in which the supreme commander of the army, in practice, commanded his armies for the first time. Hmm. So uh, that ceremony in uh, 1940, 26th of January, was part of the constitution coming into force. And it was an organic part of that larger ceremony. From the next year, in 1951, mm -hmm. the script of the parade actually changes. It becomes a spectacle to be observed every year after that. And uh, eventually became a means through which, in a visual medium, the strength, vitality, and diversity mm. of the country of India would be communicated. Mm -hmm. So the first parade is to be distinguished from the next ones. The tradition, properly speaking, comes into being the next year. Mm. Right. So uh, when you look at the initial days, how were those parades? Um, very interesting. Uh, they were not as tightly scripted as the contemporary parades are now. In fact, uh, this is to uh, the people who are already with us. If you go to YouTube, you'd get some videos of, in fact, one or two clear ones 
of the first Independence Day parade, uh, Republic Day parade, I'm sorry. Um, there you see a great deal of, um, of animals actually, much mm-hmm. larger in number than you see today. You see uh, participation from princely states. You see the, the Jaipur mounted uh, soldiers. You see the Jodhpur lancers in their camels. It was very colorful. It looked mm. very, very um, pageant-like from the very beginning. And uh, of course, the commentary would be in impeccable English and also in radio. But uh, it gave an impression of a country literally coming into being and showcasing its uh, diversity. But the diversity part would come a little later. I'll come on to that when I look at this question of how the states would be integrated and reflected Mm. in uh, the procession, which starts uh, around this time. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So uh, who all were the participants of uh, these parades? Typically, the first and second parades would be um, looking at participation by princely states and the armed forces. Hmm. Uh, they would march past and they would still uh, appear very formal. But hmm. Nehru was also concerned that India must not show its military might alone. Hmm. The projection must also include in some way the diversity of various states. Please understand right. mm-hmm. that uh, the Indian states were not yet consolidated in the form that they have come after 1956. There was something called States Reorganization Commission, which, um, you know, reorganized and uh, sort of uh, rearranged the boundaries of various provinces. They were still Mm. called provinces uh, before that. Okay, okay. And there were um, a number of princely states. Uh, Probably we should do a a separate episode on the administrative structure of India between 47 and 56. Mm. But to make, uh, to anticipate the point, um, Nehru was concerned to convey a message that the states or provinces were also part of this larger entity called India. Hmm. So, in fact, there is uh, this memo uh, which uh, has instructions about the states now uh, being included to a greater degree in the pageantry and the processions. Nehru writes that the state must also take a little more responsibility for the parents. So, you know, notices went to the states from the central uh, government that they should send across a um, tableau of or, or exhibitions of various kinds, which would include um, their crafts, their technology, their architecture, and their heritage. And that is really the beginning of this um, uh, tableaus that since then have been a regular part of uh, the processions. Mm. Now, typically these tableaus would include important episodes from the past. They could also include replicas of uh, architectural monuments or they would include um, costumes, dances, dramas or cultural um, unique cultural features of various provinces and states Mm. um, as a means to reflect the diversity of this country. One aspect that was very amusing, and I hope to come back to it later, but let me just touch upon here. Nehru was doing two things at the same time. He Mm -hmm. wanted to showcase both how India aspired to become modern and right. also how India bears within itself traces of ancient civilizations. So mm. for instance, there would be these um, indigenous communities with their uh, authentic costumes. Right. Now, over time, however, some of mm. these um, images would be frozen in time. Mm. For instance, one of the critical and regular elements Or the exhibition of these communities. Is it good? Yeah, yeah, now fine. Can you hear? Yeah. Yes, yes. Sir. So, um, yeah. 
So um, sometimes um, the original intention was to bring over people from various corners of India to perform and to provide an opportunity for them to have a larger audience. But over mm. time, you know, this folk traditions evolved into a fairly standardized urban traditions where the performers themselves would often be urban experts mm. and certain kinds of dresses would get standardized. So okay. over time, um, some of these um, markers of authenticity would also get frozen, which is sad. And Nehru also wanted to, to display how India became modern um, mm. by adopting to, for instance, um, scientific uh, advancements and taking over okay. new technologies. For mm. instance, um, over time, uh, in 1952, for instance, he in, uh, issues this instruction that uh, there should be a tableau on grow more food campaign, how India was becoming mm. self-sufficient in um, crop cultivation. Over right. uh, time, there would be tableaus on um, nuclear power installations, on dams, on um, you know, thermal and hydroelectric projects, and so right. on. So the template more or less became permanent or stable by the first three, four years. And then there were uh, general modifications. For instance, from the very first uh, Republic Day Parade, you have this uh, guest from uh, yeah, I was just going to come on as, that. As, mm. as, a, as the head of state from another country coming in. Yeah, yeah. The first guest was um, Sukarno of Indonesia, who was a friend of Nehru in the mm. non-alignment uh, movement. So things kept changing, but the overall template remained the same uh, since the 1950s. So what was the concept behind having chief guest uh, uh, from a different nation uh, over here? Now, um, this brings us to the question of the target audience. Hmm. Now, India, while hosting this parades, typically decided to look outward and inward at the same time. Hmm. <clears throat> the point about bringing um, heads of state as chief guests from other countries um, was for India to showcase their strength as a new and stable republic, yes. to show yeah. the world the very best that there is in India in a given year. Part of that was, of course, military. But you'd notice that, you know, over the years, March past consisted not only of military, but also mm. of a range of cultural exhibits, something right. that I spoke about a little while ago. At the same time, Nehru was keen that mm. the rest of India, the people of India, would find something to be proud of, to aspire to, and to indeed mm. look up to um, in these parades and right. to get them a sense of representation that, mm. you know, we too are a part of these parades, even if we are not there um, in person. That is the whole point of trying to diversify uh, the participation, to redesign, um, to um, interest and introduce new elements in the cultural yeah. part of, of uh, the exhibitions yeah. and the marches. Mm. To right. the external um, authorities, the idea was always to bring in friendly uh, heads of state and to show mm. them India's grandeur as India yeah. evolved into over time, a stronger and solid and persistent right. democratic power. I believe at that time, India did not have that image which it has today. It True. was mainly a, looked as a country of snake charmers and elephants. Am I right? It was part of that sort of cultural diplomacy too. Mm. Um, you know, um, external affairs ministry at the time carried out a great deal of propaganda and so forth. So yes, mm. um, Republic Day parades uh, were a means with which to showcase India's uh, progress, if you like, yeah. into yeah. A modern times. But, you know, as I said in the beginning, things changed over time and the part of mm. the army, um, especially the forces, um, yeah also changed in very interesting fashions. Mm -hmm. It has become, it has been over time um, a very consistent presence, but um, some details uh, too must be added. You know, there were times during which the status of the armed forces in India also went through a decline. 
Mm. Um, one of these times was in 1962 war when India lost to China. Mm. And that year, there were no armed forces in the Republic Day Parade. Okay. And um, who were now part of these parades? It was Nehru himself, his um, cabinet. Then there were politicians from various states. There were vice chancellors and various professors from Delhi University. Hmm. And a number of civilian volunteers coming over. Hmm. The idea was to showcase the solidarity and unity of India, that even when India undergoes some kind of a military tragedy, its civilian population comes together hmm. and marches through, uh, takes over indeed the role of the army. Right. On the contrary, uh, when India did well, for instance, in uh, 99 Kargil war, Mm -hmm. um, you had a more elaborate pattern <clears throat> by the military forces and also uh, the display of various weapons which helped India win that war. Wow. So uh, you know, these details often <laughs> offer very interesting perspectives on uh, how the parade evolved over time. Wonderful. So if you look at uh, it today, how does it reflect our society in general and what is your thought about the parade which is happening uh, now? Well, look, um, there are pluses and minuses. Let me begin with the minuses. Hmm. Um, and the minuses have to do with the logic of uh, holding up a strong state, projecting a strong state hmm. and demanding indirectly, a kind of loyalty. You know, mm. every year, the military parades signified that India is stable, India is one, and India is holding forth. Uh, and there was no attention to any kind of internal dissent. Mm. Mm. It's not as though the borders of the country had always been equally stable. There had been a number of times when various parts of uh, the country had uh, declared uh, resistance, opposition right. to the union right. government. Sometimes some parts of the country also wanted to secede. Hmm. It hasn't happened, uh, but there were many times when it could uh, appear uh, very threatening. But that kind of um, instability or weakness uh, did not have any scope to be reflected in the pageants during uh, the Republic Day Parade. So mm. the image of the Republic Day Parade froze the country. That is how it was scripted. It froze the country into a strong and vibrant and diverse republic all the time. Mm. In that sense, in times of trouble, the Republic Day Parade did not always uh, reflect the true or contemporary state of affairs. I have got because one statement for that. <laughs> Sub <Chandra> the Lord... <laughs> uh, uh, well. And uh, so what happens is, but then, you know, um, it also has to be remembered that Republic Day is really an affair of the state. Hmm. And the state cannot appear to be weak. Hmm. It cannot always reflect the contemporary realities because the moment the state appears weak, it also loses its legitimacy. Hmm. And Republic Day Parade is the grandest, most elaborate ceremonial assertion of the legitimacy and strength and stability of the Indian political state. Right. And it cannot afford really to appear weak. So that mm. is a structural uh, limitation. That's but one also, part of the story. It's also but it's also thing. necessary. It's yeah. also necessary to the extent that um, it harks back to this other part of Nehru's logic or aspiration mm. that it must um, 
inculcate or cultivate a sense of pride in the rest of the country and its yes. people it must not lead to any kind of destability instability destabilization mm. and so on and so forth also please remember this is also the reason why um india or the central delhi is wrapped in very high degree of security um mm. from uh, the second half of january down to uh, you know the end of that month mm-hmm. and you know there were threats at times of of disruption of that event so right. over time that event came to be invested with so much symbolic value mm. that there is no scope any more for it to appear anything different it must be carried out with a great deal of security cover yeah. it is no longer what i call a spontaneous gesture in the mm. part of the indian people the actual ceremony is a very tightly scripted government event now mm. so in a sense um it is caught in its own trap uh, and it cannot escape that uh, anymore right we have to live with that what can we do with <laughs> we don't get the best of everything yeah, everyone yeah, i suppose yeah. uh, like the, so, people like you and me i don't think we can get to attend that parade right <laughs> unless we have a very special invitation card yeah, issued by the yeah. government you know, or identity exactly. cards and so on and so forth you have to be mm. somebody special to break into yeah. part of that but initially if you look at uh, the parades you mm. have you know floods of people first republic day parade was apparently observed you know by the side on the road close mm-hmm. to 2 lakh or so people uh, at wow. time so that that spontaneity has right. over time come down now right. people see it only on tv so no way we 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 brought the complete history of parade to you on history chat so that's a bonus i would say <laughs> Yeah I mean we we looked at uh, the pluses the minuses yeah. the challenges yeah. the opportunities we we kind of tried a swot analysis of the parade ceremony I guess <laughs> and that, that's the kind of jargon that I suppose uh, gen z would like yeah <laughs> i second that <laughs> i'm trying to sound cool i have no idea you are, you sound. are you are cool you are the coolest <laughs> professor i think <laughs> there is the swot analysis of the parade makes for a good uh, good headline Yep, yeah, it does, it does, and I think that should be the title for this episode. It will go live on the podcast eventually. Right, right, right. So I guess um, we kind of touched upon all the aspects, and it'll be fun if uh, anybody has any question or queries and so on. We have Dilip with us, uh, who hosts the uh, the podcasting university. As a matter of fact, wow. <laughs> so Dilip, are you Did there? You Can you? Uh, you have something for us Just put away if you are it no oh, mind it's fun oh, no <laughs> mind no mind so i guess uh, if we do a few more of this uh, we'll have questions and queries coming yeah. in yeah 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 we 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 attempt to do a few more like this no, no, uh, yeah. eventually i yeah. i i wish you know there was a way in which we had a video clip of that 1963 uh, republic day parade mm. and uh, i i got to know about it uh, while <laughs> looking into the material for this conversation and i'm flawed right. um, uh, next time would we find it in wikileaks wikileaks i have no clue you know this can be found in contemporary newspaper uh, uh, mm. rohan and we just have to spend a little time with say uh, any english newspaper um published say, on 27th 28th 29th january 1963 somebody just has to go to tinmurthy archives in new delhi and look it up mm. <laughs> it'll all be there so <laughs> right. i'll i'll try and see if i can get uh, a times of india um, coverage times yeah, of india is share. online mm. yeah mm. see mm. if we can get that even the archives be can fun. be found Yeah yeah I think some of the newspapers Times of India mm-hmm. certainly is online mm-hmm. so we'll mm-hmm. look it up at some point and I I strongly encourage the listeners to look into it as well the it'll be fun awesome and with that I think we can wrap it up thank you so much yes. uh, for those we who could attend do, it 
Should we do yes. a Jai Hind? Okay. <laughs> no, no, that's a, that's a terrible, terrible gesture. Don't do that. That sounds so much like Hail Hitler. No, Jai Hind is fine. <laughs> let's, let's keep it low key. We all love our country, but we want that's it true. also to kind of uh, stay fun. Yep. And frolicking. Um, yep. I, I, I see Anvesha around. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Anvesha, for coming in. <laughs> Anvesha is in, in London, actually. Wow. So that's great. Um, a couple of people could join yeah, us uh, today sure. and uh, be a part of this conversation, though passively. Uh, so we'll we do more do, of this. We'll, we'll do more, hope to do more and where we can have more interactions. Once yeah. a month or so on and see if yeah. we can. I had fun. I hope uh, yeah. others did So there are too. so many topics that we can't cover in, uh, in our podcast. But I think uh, a live format like this, something that is very raw, I think it can be fun. Oh, it should be. It should be. Yeah. I'm having great fun. <laughs> this is oh. pretends to sound cool is fun. <laughs> no, no, you are cool. You are cool. The podcast is cool. The topics are cool. <laughs> we have we have been man. Uh, we have managed to cover a wide array of topics. Uh, yeah, we've kind of few. been around and happy to be around. That's yes. all that yes. matters at the end of the day, I yes. guess. So and the season two has completed twenty five episodes. So that's a yeah. We're going good. We're going good. Yes. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have that announcement soon that you mentioned right at the beginning. Oh, 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 oh. that's that's for a later time. <laughs> <laughs> So but thank yeah, you, Ron. I guess I guess I'm good. And yeah. uh, let me also um, say uh, goodbye to uh, the people around here. Thank you so much for coming in and those who dropped by. I guess this is going to be. Uh, it will be available here, and we'll available. be also yeah. publishing it on the podcast. Right, right. That should be fun. Should be fun. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. I guess I'm good. All right. Yeah. Let's wrap. Okay. Thank you sure. so much. See you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you for coming.